Milo 2. Brought to you by the best names in the business and a whole bunch of my mates helping out. Okay, so after a yarn with Ben and Jacob over at Airbag Man, this is what we've come up with. And uh, I should say this is what they've come up with, which is really quite awesome. It is. Um, in the past when I've run airbags, like on the 80 series, um, we just ran the tubes to the back and then we, you could individually sort of pump each tube. But this, this kit is completely different. First of all, um, my end of it, I'd say, because it's the not so technical bit, will be to fit these brackets which go over the bump stops and then the airbags bolt into them. As long as I get it the right way around, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, that'll be the air fixture there. That'll go through a hole there. It all looks pretty good and there's about 200 pages of instructions too. So I'll give those to Richard yeah, straight thanks, away. Mate. <laughs> we're going to read photos before we start. Yeah, do you mind reading through? <laughs> well, I'll have a look too, just briefly, you know, like because I know everything anyway. Jeez, oh, that's why you've got to have instructions, eh? <laughs> now, this bit is really interesting because this is an onboard air compressor and it's a beautiful little thing too. Look at that. I mean, it's real quality. It's got um, a stainless hose and must breathe from there. Yeah, the breather goes on the end there. It comes with replacement filters. Far out. Mm. Really thick wires. I love mm. to see that mm. in, in any 12 volt appliance, especially something with an engine in it. You know, it's, believe it or not, there's more money in copper than almost anything else. Mm. So if they go to the trouble of fitting big wires, you usually know you've got something good. Mm. And then we've got an air tank. Yep. Right. That's a four litre tank, I think. And what's this? That's oh, a little... the air inflation kit that it comes with. So I'm going to have onboard air mm. as well as airbags in the rear. And is there, there's a gauge in here somewhere yeah, too, isn't gauges, there? Yeah, gauges, then you've got your, oh, that's in it. You've got all your unions and your, your little air switches there. Wow. And then oh, the wow. There's what's some, that? Two switches? Air switches, up and down. Up and down. Oh, the roof, the roof okay. at the lights, all man. Gauges <laughs> there and, yeah. Oh yeah, it's and that's kit. it's an extensive kit. Is that a digital gauge? Yeah, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it matches the other yeah, <laughs> trick gauges we got in the truck already. Mm. So there you go. This is a really comprehensive fit out. Mm. Um, and at the end of the day, we wind up with not just you know adjustable suspension to load requirements in the back that retains the maximum degree of comfort. We also wind up with onboard air, mm -hmm. instant inflation of tyres. This is awesome. All right, mate, well, I'm going to take the hard end of the job. Yeah. You know, fitting this stuff. I thought as much. And, and I'll leave all this simple stuff to you. That's it. Good having a smart guy around, eh? <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Yep. Just got to get the bump stops out on the bottom here. That's all. These top ones actually stay there and the brackets go around them, which is great because I reckon that'd be a cutting job to get those off. Bump stops, that's just the U bolts. Uh, I'm going to reuse these U bolts which I'm okay with, because I tension them up so I know what's going on. Um, and I'm hoping to not have to shift the axle at all, just by getting one of these out and the other one high enough and see what happens. Come out, little bump stop. Ah, damn. Oh, well, that's all right. We're pulling the, um, the pressure pipe through here now. Ensure that it's got the split tube around it and we're also putting it inside the chassis rail to give it as much protection as possible from when we go full driving and off-road and that you just take your time try and protect it as much as possible because you do not want the air lapsing out of it. So um, this is the top bracket and guess he didn't do his measuring properly. I think that would be me. There's just a poofteenth difference here. So with the grinder, I'm just going to take the lip off that. Actually, I'm going to cut it off so I don't uh, risk nicking the chassis. Not a good place to have a cut in your chassis, is it? Right, change of plan here. Um, these bump stops are going to interfere too much. Um, that's my measuring again. So. I'm just going to knock them off. There you go. Oh, it'll be hot. 
cool. That's oh, not too bad under there. I was kind of half expecting it to be all rusty, you know, being a hidden point. But um, that's not a good reason not to know, is it? Now I know, it's solid. Okay, so um, we worked out that we can actually assemble this, 90% uh, anyway, keeping everything loose, um, and then fit it in, which is awesome. Um, possibly you couldn't do that if you'd left the bump stops on. Would have been a bit of a struggle. And because we've got a non-standard tray, we've had to do a little bit of cutting and bending and stuff to make the brackets fit. And the brake lines, of course, which uh, the guy who did the measuring should be taken out and shot. Um, they're going to need a little bit of bending, basically, but nothing that we can't get away with, which is good. And in fact, to some degree, on the bottom, there's enough space we can run the brake lines through the U-bolts without causing any havoc which gives them another degree of safety. So, um, all good so far. This is lovely. That's going to work. How's that fit, Rich? It's good, mate. Hey. Okay, so um, what we're doing, we sort of machine tightened it a little bit, and then we're going to hand tighten it. This is the old thing, you know, always working cross tensions whenever you've got something, doesn't matter, cylinder head, U-bolts, whatever. And so that's what we're doing in this case. And we're paying particular attention. In fact, you just missed out on a whole bunch of hammering to get this centered. That's the center of the old bump stop. And that's where the top of the airbag has to be. Because obviously you want it to go straight up and down and not on some slight little angle. So that's just about perfect. So, okay. Gee, there's a bit of tension on that already. Okay. On the other side. Yeah, yeah, it's sitting right on top of the rivet. Yeah. I'm wondering about that, mate, whether or not we shouldn't make a, like a, a, groove a, a, a wedge. No, not so much a groove. I was just thinking a wedge to fit underneath it on top of the chassis. Mm -hmm. One more little battle, but it is only a little battle, and we'll be there. Cool. Well, Woohoo! Do you like the way she's rocking on the hoist? Um, I don't think I'll get under there for a minute. Right now, any custom truck work means custom, doesn't it? Right from the start. And this kit would have fitted perfectly if this wasn't a custom truck. Now, it's as it is, it's gone in beautifully. I've got to, got to say, it really, it's amazing. But of course, because we're using a 79 tray, not in its native situation, on a... Um, 40, 47 chassis, 45 chassis, 45 chassis, 47, oh, uh, all the same thing, um, 47 chassis, then, you know, obviously we had to, we had brackets in the wrong places, we had braces in the wrong place, we'd be cutting, hammering, banging away, um, all done, no problems at all, and nothing to affect the movement of the suspension, which is the big thing. Uh, I'm just going to go under, hook up the shocks, and... Um, have a bit of figure of eight play on the U-bolts and Richard is going to mount the compressor and the tank underneath the shelf unit on the other side of the canopy. So it's actually protected because it'll be above the wheel arch inside the canopy which we know doesn't leak dust or anything. Um, it just couldn't be better and I'm going to have a permanent air supply with a little fitting because they give you a fitting that goes on it um, and it'll be poking just out behind the spare on the other side. So it'll be like pulling up to your own garage. Magic. And there's going to be dials in the cabin so I can adjust the airbags. Now, it occurred to me, because Simon mentioned it, that that means from now on I don't even have to worry about finding flat ground before I put the roof topper up. All I have to do is sit in the cabin and play with the air buttons. I can tilt the truck, I can lift the back up. You'll see me at the lights, I'll be the Mexican guy. We finished the, uh, you know, highly technical, really hard bit, fitting the airbags underneath. So now it's just the easy sort of plumbing stuff, you know, reading 42 pages of instructions and deciphering it all. Um, and then, you know, the physical job of hooking the whole lot together. So. I think Richard's got this under control because after all he's the guy from Smart and um, I think the best thing I can do is go and check the temperature of the fridge. 
just in case I need a beer. Just remember to think of me while you're there, mate. I'll think of you while I'm there, Richard. Okay, well, um, Rich is up the other end of the truck working on the gauges and the buttons, but I just wanted to show you this beautiful job he's done here because um, this is the difference between someone like him and me. Uh, I could get this to work, not a problem. Probably the third or fourth go, it'd look halfway decent too. But look at this, he's really thought it out. Um, this compressor will run on any angle, so it's sitting upside down. It breathes from this end inside the canopy, so it's perfect. The air tank, it's all sitting on top of the wheel well, which means it's pretty well protected by the shelf unit here. And of course, this is the shelf unit that's got the plugs for the fridge and lights and the fuse box and everything else. So all the wiring is going to be kept on this part of the truck. And at the end there, there's a little valve, you know, a little nitto connection uh, that takes the airline. And that's on the outside. So this little gig here is beautifully set up and all together, all nice and compact. Most of all, it's protected because, as you know, once you start off-roading, you know, stuff shifts around like nothing on earth. Up front, um, we've got two buttons and a gauge. And um, the gauge looks pretty fancy, so do the buttons. Um, those buttons, they go two ways, so it's like up and down for each airbag, That's is right, it? That's right, mate, yeah, up and down, and then we've got your, they'll be going just here next to the, the secondary fuel gauge. And then we've got a lovely spot right in the middle of the, the dash there. Oh, is that going to fit? Yeah, man, that'll go straight in there. Oh, the other that one, looks, that looks cosmic. Yeah, man. That looks really cosmic. Awesome. It's just this big black void, you know? Yeah. It's gonna light up beautiful. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So, I'm just gonna pull all this forward, run all the lines up here. J just a suggestion from an old pro, mate. <laughs> um, you know these two way buttons? Mm -hmm. Up, more pressure, down, less pressure. Oh, you don't want it inverted, no? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so helpful. <laughs> I'll go back to doing up wheel nuts or yeah, something. Okay, all right, mate. mate, good on you. Right, oh, so. Um, here we are, it's testing time. Look at that gauge, isn't that beautiful? Now that's sitting on 47 PSI for both bags. Um, 50 is the maximum. And if I push them down, look at that. So I can now control this. From the cab control the height of the truck, which is amazing because when you think about it, you know, you can blow up one side, let the other side down, do all sorts of things. Forty-nine on one side and I can feel it. She's all kicked up like this. That's brilliant. That's you can hear the compressor kicking in. The compressor keeps the tank permanently pumped at 150 PSI. It's that easy. How good's that? I've got a Mexican truck. Here we go. Um, all we're doing now is screwing the dash back in. She's all done. I've got knobs and buttons and gauges. And the dogs love it. Good stuff, mate. Well yeah, done. Awesome. Yeah. I'll shout you a beer now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> My way to brought to you by the best names in the business and a whole bunch of my mates helping out.